The health risks caused by smoking are staggering, yet tobacco remains the leading cause of preventable death, claiming lives of more than 20,000 New Yorkers every year. Thousands of Americans are making plans to quit smoking during the Great American Smokeout. We're joined today by the Erie Niagara uh, Coalition for, uh, sorry, the Erie Niagara Tobacco Free Coalition. We're joined by Gal Burstein, Anthony Bellani, and Terry Blaine, we're all going to be discussing, you know, not only the benefits of quitting smoking now, but um, Terry, you were a smoker, so I want to get your input on all of this too. But let's start by talking about the great American smokeout. Let's sort of establish what this means. Well, uh, we are proud to celebrate with the American Cancer Society what was kind of become a national holiday for quitting. It was uh, started more than 30 years ago. And it was a way to call attention to uh, one of the single best things you can do to prevent cancer if you're a tobacco user, which is to quit. So they said, let's put a, a, a stake in the sand, if you will, and get as many people as we can just to quit for one day, just to start. We were, we were talking with uh, Terry and her husband, and she'll tell you more, but they talked about how they changed their habits. And you have to start by doing one thing to uh, make that happen. The smoke out is a way to people uh, start for 24 hours, just get in and do it. And you know, if you're not a tobacco user, I'm, there's going to be a tobacco user in your life. So it might not affect you, but it's going to affect someone you love. Now let's, if we were to open up a textbook and read the negative effects of tobacco smoking, what would those be? Well, actually tobacco is a preventable form of, of a death sentence. I mean, it really causes a lot of death and a lot of illness. It's responsible for almost all lung cancers. It's responsible for many heart attacks. Um, it's you know, responsible for many other types of cancers. So there's nothing good about it. It's expensive. And even if you don't smoke, if somebody you, around you smokes, I mean, you're at risk too from secondhand smoke. So now we kind of know what the textbooks are saying, but I want to turn to you, Terry, because you're the one that was smoking. You quit smoking. What was the transition like for you? It was easy for me because I was so sick, but I was uh, diagnosed with a pulmonary embolism at 49. I'd smoked for 33 years, two packs a day, and uh, I had a wake-up call. Basically, I quit smoking, we changed our habits, my husband quit smoking, my entire family doesn't smoke and we're, we're f healthy. And what has that done for your body, quitting smoking? I feel better all the way around. I have another chance. So yeah. then for people out there that do smoke or know a smoker that they want to get involved in the Great American Smoke Out, how do they do this? Well, there's, uh, the first thing is to just uh, uh, decide to stop. Um, and there's lots of ways uh, to get help. Uh, the first thing that we recommend is that you check in with your doctor or another health professional that you're close with. Uh, the more professionals that you enlist as allies to help you quit, studies have shown the more successful someone will be. Um, your health plan is a way to uh, um, find a pathway to quitting. And if uh, neither of those uh, are, are available to you, um, we also are aligned with the New York State Smokers Quit Line, which they can access uh, by phone, which is 866-NY-QUITS or by, uh, um, by internet, which is uh, um, uh, www.nysmokefree.com. Uh, and then Terry, real quick, for people that are trying to quit, what should their loved ones be doing to help this process along? Nurture them and help them. Just stay away from smoking because that's the best thing you can do for yourself. All right, well thank you all three for coming in today. This is such an important conversation to have. Thanks for